Hello and welcome back. I am now sitting with Gay Gaddis, the founder of T3. How you doing? I'm doing great. It's just so good to be back at South by. <laughs> I'm pinching myself. I, as am I. Um, also, I just have to comment on your amazing jacket. Like, Best? You know, I was just looking at it in the, in the screen here, and it reminds me of my Maleficent costume, you know, oh from gosh. Sleeping Beauty, yeah. you know. <laughs> it looks phenomenal. Um, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm curious, when you were presented with this panel topic, what was your first reaction to talking about, you know, empowerment and women, especially in this post-pandemic world? Well, women especially have been hurt during the pandemic because of family issues and so many things that women have faced. So it's a real time to bind together and get out there and help other women. Uh, I'm devoting a lot of my time to it. After I saw my company, T3, I have an executive women's uh, leadership program that I'm doing with the University of Texas. So yeah, I'm very, very much about this. And so anything I can do to help or, you know, give some women an idea on how they can grow their business is a good thing. Oh, absolutely. And you mentioned something in the panel. You kept driving home this notion of hard work and how if you work hard, then you can own that. You've earned it. It is yours. Do you have a story that you can share that maybe in your early, earlier in your career where you can think back and say, I worked so hard and this is just a moment that I want to reflect on to inspire other people potentially? You know, I think I've always done it, and everything I uh, tried to do from the time I was a little child, I was always, if I was focused on something, I'd put time in it and I worked hard. But I want to go back really to my training at the University of Texas. And I, I majored in fine art, and I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Studio Art. So oh, wow. today, being an artist again was going back to those roots. But you talk about putting in the time. Yeah. You know, we went to class nine hours a week for three hours of credit, so you were in the studio a lot. And it was hard work. That's all I can tell you about it. And so I think I learned that discipline there yeah. uh, that you're going to have to put in the time to really get to something better and learn to take a critique and move forward and really, really just get, get better and better. I certainly need to take that to heart and put in a little bit more hard work in my own life. So thank you for inspiring me it today. It takes time. Yeah. You've got to put the time where your, where your heart is. Yep. You know? That's what my dad always says too. Um, and I, I'm going to ask one more quick question, if I may. Um, how has this conversation with all these other women today, do you find yourself rethinking any of your own beliefs or maybe thinking about things in a little bit of a different way after that conversation? I always learn from other women and it's always interesting to see what, what is in their heart and head and what they're thinking about these days as far as moving it all forward and paying it back. Um, I do like the idea though that, and I talked about it a bit on the panel, I've, I've been giving myself a little more think time and uh, taking more time to say, what do you really want to do? Because we get moving so quickly. You know, and everyone up here on the panel has to do a lot. And we have families and we have their work and we have so many things on our plate. So you've got to kind of give yourself, it goes back to time again. Mm -hmm. Time for hard work to get good at and then time to think. Uh, it's a very important thing that we sometimes just kind of gloss over and then you realize you know I really didn't do that next big thing because I didn't think it through. Do you set aside time? I know I said I had one question but just a quick follow on. Do you do you take time to say I'm going to use this time for thinking or do you just kind of intentionally set your days in such a way that you allocate for thinking? Uh, I am not as organized and structured as some of my friends. <laughs> So it doesn't always come in a block of time. If I just told myself that from 8 to 10 in the morning, I was just going to wall off and think. I know people who do that, but I can't. I have to kind of grab it when it comes, but then take that and say, okay, it's here. I'm, I'm really there. And so I'll start putting sticky notes around, <laughs> and I start just kind of using that moment where the creative burst comes and ideas come. And the ideas on the sticky notes may not be all good, but it's okay because I'm grabbing it at that moment. And it's kind of like as an artist when I'm painting, I don't set aside studio time. Well, okay, I'm gonna paint from two to four today. Mm -hmm. No, it has to, I have to be inspired. Yeah. And I have to do that when in that moment. So the freedom to be able to do that is really important, you know, is to be able to grab that time when you can. Take it as it comes. Right. Well, Gay, thank you so, so much for being here with us today and for teaching me a little bit more about how to embrace my time and work hard. We're going to throw it over to Megan now. Thank you.